Welcome to Seeing Movies, the show where we review movies, but from a Christian's perspective, I am the filmmaker. And I'm the film watcher. And today we're reviewing The Black Cauldron, released in 1985 by Disney. And you may have never heard of this movie. Or maybe you have. Or maybe you have, but likely you haven't. Okay. Based off of one fact. Well, it didn't do well. It didn't do well. In theaters, they spent $44 million to make this movie. And $44 million. Forty-four million, which is ninety-eight million in today's money, and they made twenty-one point three million back, which caused them to not even release the movie for thirteen years on VHS. But we own it, so is it bad, or is it good, or is it a hidden gem? You're about to find out. See, hen, everybody runs from the famous Tyrant of Castle. <laughs> the first category is story. In the mystical land of Pridian. Pridain. P R Y D A I N. Pridain. However you want to say that. A young boy named Taran, who dreams of a future as an invincible warrior, finds himself leading a real life quest. In a race against the evil Horn King, Taran must be the first to find the mysterious Black Cauldron, or the Horn King will unleash its power and take over the world. With the help of a magic sword, an enchanting princess, and an ador adorable clair clairvoyant pig, and a funny little creature named Gurgi, Taran overcomes winged dragons, the king's monstrous henchmen, three baddie witches, and more. And learns nothing is as powerful. <laughs> I thought I said, and learns nothing. That's why I thought when I read it the first time, too. <laughs> and learns nothing is as powerful as courage and friendship. Almost like they should have put learns that nothing. They should yeah. probably put the that there. And so it sounds, learns nothing. <laughs> the word that is missing from that sentence. But yes. <laughs> so what did you think of the black cauldron? I know I probably shouldn't give it... Don't but give it a score the yet. The story. Okay, sorry. All right. Go ahead and run through it, but don't give it a score okay. yet. Okay. I know, I know you were, like, <laughs> raring to give it a score already. I actually really like the story. It feels... I don't know if you've ever... Or if any of you have ever read George MacDonald fairy tales. I haven't. But it reminded me a lot of a George MacDonald fairy tale. Just like the old school fairy tale where, yeah. you know, the kid is the unlikely hero, there's lots of evil dark things, and yet he overcomes at the end with, with strange, weird objects and a pig. I mean, who would have thought to use a, a pig? Psychic pig. A psychic we'll pig. We'll get that. We'll get there later. Um, but it was very, I don't know, it was just, it was very, it felt very Grimm's Brothers, I guess, maybe. Is it was very dark. Well, it was very dark. It was very dark for a kid's story. Yes. Even for, and if this story was made live action for maybe young adults, mm -hmm. like, the, like the wave of movies going around with Hunger Games and all that, are, you know, Hunger Games, Divergent, all the, the movies meant for that age range, this would even be dark for them. Well, that's what I'm saying, the, like, originally old fairy tales were mm -hmm. meant for kids, but they were really dark. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not, to, when I say Grimm's, I'm not talking about this movie Disney Grimm. Yeah. Where everything's happy in the end. Yeah. Like. This story didn't hold back a lot of punches. No. No. And I, that's why dark. I liked it. It was. It was definitely, an, it was, I wouldn't say it's original as much as it's just r really dark. Yeah. It was really dark. It they didn't try to lighten anything up. They and did not try to that's lighten. That's why. Gurgi, I think, was the only light Gurgi thing was, about this. Well, and the witches. But we'll get to that when we get to characters. Uh, the coming, it was a kind of a, it's a coming of age hero on an adventure story. He starts out, he's cocky. He's like, I could go fight in the war. Some, there's some war going on. It doesn't, this isn't real life, so I can't tell you which war. But he's like, oh, I can go fight in the war. I'm sweet. And he gets like a stick and he's like swinging around at animals. He's like, look, they're all scared of me. And by the end of the movie, he is not that same character. He makes a lot of progression yeah. in only 80 minutes of a movie. A lot of character well, what progression. happened to him. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I'm saying it's good. Yeah. Um, it's, he's not the same guy he is at the beginning of the movie. Whereas if we hearken back to Zootopia, Hops kind of is just the same character. Maybe she's a little bit stronger. She's pretty much the same character. Well, she realizes that... He is not the same guy he was at the beginning no, of this movie. Very, he yeah. makes a lot of progression in this yeah. movie, Taran does. Um, which is great. Uh, it, it is, it's coming of age and a hero on an adventure story. He goes on a quest. Um, I think a negative was the pig keeper didn't go with Taran on the quest. I know he's old and stuff, but... Well, that is that is a thing about old fairy tales. Like, the main character has to do it on their own. Yeah, like, but he doesn't do it on his own. In this, in this, in this story, yeah. he doesn't he? He, he gets, has help from. He friends, gets the yeah. princess. He gets that other old dude, yeah. which ex doesn't explain, and that which kind of removes the. Oh, maybe it's because the guy's old. He doesn't go with him. No, no. And then you got Gurgi, and then you got. Are we on characters now? Or we're still on story. 
We're on stories. Okay. It's just, I don't know. Um, and then there's I the biggest negative for me, and the reason this this didn't get a higher score and got a pretty high score, was there was no final epic showdown between Tarn and the Evil Horn King. But that was kind of the point. No, I was really hoping yeah. they would duke it out. No, but the point was that by the end of it, Tarn learns that he can't. He's not this superhero. Yeah. He realizes it takes courage and your friends and yeah. determination well, been and doing what's right. Maybe if he fought the Evil Horn King and the o- Evil Horn King overwhelmed him with his Evil Horn King strength, but that didn't happen. That's why I was I was I was really hoping for even if he lost the battle that he would have a battle with the Evil Horn yeah. King one on one, and that kind of didn't happen. Like they had an encounter. If you watch the movie, they have an encounter. They just don't have like I was really hoping for like but some sort of fight. But realistically, like he was in love with your boy who had no. I know, and the Evil Horn King yeah. had all this superpower, and but the, that's my that was my issues. They didn't have the Evil Horn King overpower. I don't care how, just had didn't have him overpower the eleven year old boy. It was kind of like watching know. Force Awakens at the end of the movie, and Ray should have been overpowered by Kylo, and she didn't get overpowered. Yeah, but, but they hadn't, and it, because he was kind of toying with, just like he was toying. Anyways, that's a different movie. But see that that disappointed you because no, that was a great showdown okay. though. It didn't disappoint me. Okay. That's a whole different movie review though. I'm saying I was hoping for something like that, whereas clearly the Horn King is is stronger than than Tarin, and but Tarin still wins somehow. Ray still. One somehow through complete BS with the Earth splitting. Well, there, I think. But Tarin didn't have anything like that. I think they were just doing it just to be different. Like there were several things in this that weren't predictable. Yeah. Like in any other, like when he finds the magic sword and the magic sword mm-hmm. helps them, he doesn't get to keep the magic sword, which it's the true. witches take it away from him. With any other it's Disney, he, he would have got to keep that. He sword. traded the magic sword to find out where the black hole yeah. was because he didn't know. Nobody knew. Where and it he was. never got. He never got the sword back. Nobody knew where the horn. Yeah, I was actually half expecting the witches yeah. to give it back to him for the final battle, and that didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. So the, I think that they were doing things that were unpredictable, so you couldn't just be like, "Oh, oh he's well, gonna get he's the." Gonna the it's sword. okay. He trades the sword. He's gonna get yeah. back later. He did not get he the didn't. sword back later. No. Uh, he lost Excalibur. I don't know what it's called. Excalibur. <laughs> he didn't have a um, The story got an 8 out of 10 for me. I got a 9. You act like that was a... I got a 9. No, I mean, oh. like, I liked oh, it a darn. lot, but I know I know everyone... It's not for everyone. It's not the perfect story. Yeah. You don't, you're rating it based off what you think. Okay. It's not the perfect story, but it's an original story, and it's good, and it's dark. See, Hen? Everybody runs from the famous Tarn of Cat <laughs> Next category is characters. My favorite character was the Horn King. I was kind of rooting for him. He's the essence of evil. I don't, not that I root for evil. I, I guess I probably should reword that. But the Horn King was the best part of the movie because, really? yeah, be, I don't. I've in more recent movies, the evil character is not really just pure but evil. But he has no depth. He's the embodiment. He, you're right. He isn't deep at all. He has no depth. But he's the embodiment of evil. It, yeah. it feels, and he didn't feel, and it feel, it did, at no point I feel like he had a weakness either. Yeah. Him. I never felt like he had a weakness. I'm like, I don't. I honestly did not know how Taryn was gonna beat him. I did not know how. I didn't. I had no idea. I was like, this guy literally just evil mm-hmm. coming out of him constantly. Yeah. He's way too strong. Like there's this guy. This kid doesn't stand a chance. And he beats him at the end. But Taryn doesn't. Taryn. Well, Taryn. He. No, I mean, he. Doesn't. He, he doesn't beat him in this in the epic showdown I was hoping for, but. Taron wins. Maybe not the way we expect it, but he wins. And evil, it was probably the only way, because the Evil Horn King is just so, he's so strong. And you don't see that, I, I think, as often. Like, when most bad guys get defeated in recent movies, such as Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, they get weakened first. Mm-hmm. When she had, when, when the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, when the Qu- Ice Queen had control of the entire Narnia, she was unstoppable. When everything was snow, who could stop her? But they had to weaken her, and in this movie, there was no, they didn't weaken the Horn King. Yeah. Yeah, that Horn King was pretty much unstoppable. Yeah. But he's still a lot. But anyways, I thought he was great. I um, like Taryn. Taryn was my favorite character. Actually, I put Taryn as generic. No. I liked, I do like, okay, well, he is generic, in my opinion, okay. but I do like how he grew, as I said earlier. Yes. He did. He grew from, from this fearless and naive character to, he's more cautious, but he's heroic. He has, he gets courage. He gets courage. Yeah. He's, he's the lion from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, but yeah, he did. He, he grew as a character. Uh, Gergi is cute, but I think we both recognize that. Kind of reminds you of Smeagol or Gollum or however yeah. you say his name. Yeah, precious. <laughs> and he just had that voice. 
Yeah, but and this is before Lord of the Rings. And this he was pathetic. tipsy. 1985. This is 15 years before, yeah. 16 years before Fellowship, and be- definitely before Two Towers. But um, he was cute. He was. He, I didn't know what he was. Still, I well, still, he's not anything. He's like uh, a yeah. Creature. I still don't know what he. <laughs> he's is. a fluffy creature. He's just a fluffy creature. I don't it, even on the back of the box. What yeah, does it say? But it says a little furry creature. Little furry creature. They're like even the even they were like we don't know what he is, and we made the movie. Somebody drew him. We thought he was somebody cute. drew him. Yeah, we thought he was cute. We gave him Smeagol's voice, and that was it. It might have, if it was the same guy who voiced both of them, I wouldn't be surprised. It it's probably not. isn't. It's not. Probably isn't, but if it was, I wouldn't have been surprised. So the characters got what from you? I got an eight. They got a seven out of ten from me. See, Hen, everybody runs from the famous Tarn of Cat Goblin. <laughs> the next category is music. I, it was good, but it was all background music. There was no theme song. Yeah, this wasn't a, this wasn't yeah. the Disney movie you expected where the characters sing. As for background music, it was fine, but it was there was nothing like memorable. I don't. Think. The movies that came after this by Disney were The Great Mouse Detective, which I don't know. Did they sing any songs in that movie? Yeah. They sang songs in Great Mouse Detective. Oliver and Company was next one. They sang songs in that one, they, and then The Little Mermaid, and then you know you probably know how it goes from there. So this movie not having any songs sung by the characters in the movie is weird. Mm-hmm. But at least they didn't. I don't know. It's almost like it's probably worked in their favor because would, it, I think it'd been weird if they started. Yeah. It would have made it it'd less fit epic. It more of the serious yeah, story. It would have been less epic if people were singing a song. Yeah. Like if Phil Collins started belting out, <laughs> "Trust your heart, let fate decide," it probably would have ruined that the was tone. Much later. That was like I know, later. but I'm saying that's the only other Disney movie I can think of in this before 2000 where this, there were songs that they just weren't sung by the main characters. Yeah, yeah. and. So Phil Collins busting out here would have been would have been hilarious, but completely off. Yeah. Yeah. So the music it was, as I said, music is epic in places. I think I agreed with you there, namely towards the end, the end, the last twenty minutes of the movie. But otherwise, I think it's kind of lacking. There were scenes where there wasn't any music. I'm like, there should be a little something, like mm-hmm. a little something here, and there wasn't anything. Yeah. Um, so I get I mean, music was just kind of forgettable. So I put five out of ten. I gave it a six. You seem to be one upping me on all the scores. See, Hen, everybody runs from the famous Tarn of Cat Goblin. <laughs> the next category is animation. Fun fact: this is the first use of CGI in the Disney film. And when I read that online, we were looking for it. Mm-hmm. We were like, "When's the CGI going to show up?" In 1985. <laughs> Ridiculous, by the way. Back to the Future came out that year, but that's not an animated movie. They didn't. I don't. Did they? I don't think they gave you CGI back to the future. Don't quote me on that. I don't recall them using a CGI in the first Back to the Future. No, I guess, I mean, if you count, like, that's a whole different movie. Okay. We'll talk about that later. I guess they might have. I, haven't, I need to rewatch it. But, okay, but in an animated film, first use of CGI, especially in a Disney film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we and I noted it was actually towards the end of the movie, in the last, like, ten minutes, it was used for the explosions. We're not going to explain what was exploded, but and I probably can't show it because I might give it away, but... It was used for the explosions, and you could tell, and you're like, oh yeah, well, it was actually well used. It wasn't like in your face, we're using CGI for the first time. Probably for the best. Yeah. It, kind of, it was kind of like just blended in, like they were testing it out. Um, what did what you think of the animation? Um, I thought it was good. Everything fit the theme. It was all dark. Everything was dark. Like I said, even the the happy fairies or whatever, yeah. they lived in the bottom of a well and everything was dark. So <laughs> even the, the cute happy fairies... Yeah. Like everything is dark, and so the animation and the and the drawings and everything fit all of that. Um, it did have a lot of detail that was good, but I don't know. I guess it just because of the time period and everything, mm-hmm. it's still pretty just basic. Nineteen eighty five. Yeah, I put the animation is pretty standard and basic, but in the last twenty minutes, okay, so it's almost like they made the first sixty minutes of the movie, and it was basic in terms of animation. And then the last twenty minutes are like everything that we have is going into this. And so the entire, because the green swirly smoke everywhere was, it was a nice effect. Mm-hmm. Um, the CGI explo- that they add to the explosion was nice. It was, it was pretty base. it was pretty standard, nothing really spectacular until the end. And the ends really, really put most of their effort into, and you could tell. It wasn't like Pocahontas though, where it was inconsistent. It was pretty, it consistently built up yeah. until mm-hmm. the end. Yeah. So even though it wasn't this, it wasn't as, it wasn't equally good everywhere. It, at least it was in the right spot. Yeah. It wasn't just in the songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or what, you know, there was no songs, but yeah. But I guess my biggest question for the animation is where did the 44 million go? Because it wasn't in the sound. Like, I mean, was it in the explosions? I don't 
44 million people, 98 million in today's dollars towards this movie. Deadpool was made on 50 million, if that gives you any perspective on today's money. So this movie's made for almost twice the budget of Deadpool today. So that makes me wonder, where did the 44 million go? The animation wasn't like, um, that's what I was half expecting when I saw the budget. I was like, oh, the animation's gonna be, and it wasn't, so. Maybe someone stole. I don't know, but the animation was pretty good. I'm not knocking it for that. I just want to know where the money went. Did somebody pocket it? Possibly. <laughs> animation, nine out of 10. I gave it a seven. Seven out of 10, okay. See, Hen, everybody runs from the famous Taran of Cat <laughs> Oof. The last category is Christian Nutritional Value. This is where it got inconsistent. Probably for the sake of the darker story, it got inconsistent on mm -hmm. Christian Nutritional Value. Uh, I put the minions are representations of the seven deadly sins. I didn't catch that. The Horn King's minions, yeah. Yeah. Representations of the seven deadly sins, kind of, kind of subtle, and you probably won't notice it if you're younger. But you didn't even notice it, so. I mean, they were drinking and carousing and womanizing, I guess, was the yeah. point. But, but there were seven deadly sins, yeah. Okay. Um, then another plus was courage and friendship, as they kind of mm -hmm. told you in the back of the box. And it is. Friendship is actually very important here. They would not have defeated the evil Horn King without working together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my favorite... If it was just Tarn, you'd have been screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my positive for this was uh, the humility that Taran learns. Like, mm -hmm. he learns... In... Not to be so cocky. Yeah. And, yeah. And not... Because that's something that kind of bugs me is, oh, well, I'm going to be a hero and I mm -hmm. turn out to be a hero. And, not, and none of the heroes We're like, are like, I'm going to fall in love. <laughs> none of the heroes in Disney movies are that, like, blatantly this proud. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of there. Like, I'm going to do this. And then, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Simba. But Tara and... Yeah, sure. Simba and, you know, all of them from Lion King. Yeah. They were literally a pride. The sequel's called... Simba's Pride. Wait, where is it? Lion King 2. Simba's Pride, Lion King 2. Trust me, I just checked. Anyways, but I like the fact that the hero learns he has to be humble and that it's through humility and it's not through being a great magical hero. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I like that. Yeah, he that didn't get favorite. what he wanted. But he got something Through better. some sort of, like, BS or plot convenience. No, he got, yeah. like, how it would actually happen. I mean, it's not real life. And I mean, the lessons he learned were real life lessons. Yeah, just the, that's what I, the setting wasn't yeah. real life, obviously. Yeah. So I didn't want to say he learned it in a real life way. He did. He did learn it by growing up, though, and he learned that what he originally thought. Like he's not some. Be he's not some. You know, some awesome bro dude who's gonna go around slicing guys up and killing everybody in the war, like he thought originally when he was poking at animals with yeah. sticks. Yeah. Oh man, but then the negatives. The big breasted witch in this movie is the probably the very first thing I noticed. Yeah. The big breasted witch, which is on the back of the box. I mean, it's hard to tell, but on the back of the box. Well, and it wouldn't have even. Not that focus, but. It wouldn't have even been that bad except for the whole scene where. It, she it, was really into the old dude. The guy, the old dude, got turned into a frog, and mm -hmm. he like spends at least two or three minutes Inside trying to get out of her boobs. Yeah, yeah, he's he's down he's down in the yeah. chest area. So that was. And she, and she is a big breasted woman. You can see all of her cleavage. Yeah. Yeah. Un I mean, I guess it's like her big breasts are fitting in terms of her size, but it still was just, it was really pushed. For a kid's movie, it was really pushed it was on. Awkward. It was weird. Yeah. As an adult, it was, I was, I thought it was, it was whatever, but then I realized, wait, this is meant, for, I guess yeah. we kind of forgot in the midst of the movie it was meant for kids. I kept having to remind myself, like, this is made for kids. This is made for kids. Because yeah. it really felt like it was made for teenagers, adults, which is probably the appropriate audience considering. Um, there's also gruesome deaths, including suicide slash sacrifice. Yeah. That would have been... Do not say who did it. Okay, All that right. would have been perfect. Uh, it's just the line that he says right before he sacrifices slash commits suicide. Yeah, it really is a It made it suicidal. Versus yeah. if he hadn't have said that line or if the line had been changed... And had he just been like, I had to do the, I, had, I have to do this. Yeah. You know? If he just said that he has to do this for the sake of everybody. Right. But what he said was... You want me to say it? Go for it. I have Without, no friends. I have no friends. <laughs> I have no friends. And I'm not gonna show I'm not gonna show them who commits the suicide. Right. But when you, I actually we are going uh, spoiler, we're probably gonna recommend you watch the movie. Yeah. But yeah, do you like when he said I have no friends, like, wait, what? Yeah. Like it's not no perfect. Friends. Like I'm all for Was sacrificial... he trying to explain away his death or yeah, something? I, I thought you should have said because I'm your friend. Yes. Yeah, when Say says I have no friends. That would have made the whole entire thing because I am your it, friend. It's almost like they made it that went darker on purpose. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So that was uh and then which is reviving dead characters. Another spoiler alert. I I guess you can put two and two together there, but and there's other dead characters they revive. 
That's just that wasn't just one. They revolve. I put characters. Don't give me weird looks. Okay. I recall them reviving multiple dead characters. I could be wrong. Could have just been one. Okay. But yeah, that was a. I mean, that was. It was just so that it had a happy ending and it. It kind of they kind of Disney fied the end. If they hadn't done that. It would have been. It would have fit the rest lot. of the movie. It was a little bit off them reviving. But it. I, yeah, it's just weird whenever you revive. There could have been another plot twist where he didn't actually die, or they didn't actually. And it was all just a dream. Yeah, no, it wasn't just a dream. But you know what I mean. Like I was expecting that. I was not expecting the witches to come back and actually revive a dead character. Like that's just. I don't know. It was very Disney on that. That was probably the most Disney thing about this movie. I just didn't. This movie was very not much not Disney. Oh no, yeah. I yeah, if you expect if you thought this was if you watch this and you expect a Disney movie, you're incorrect. This is not a Disney movie. I mean it's made by Disney. It even has Walt Disney's name on it with the masterpiece collection. That's why we waited thirteen years to release it in any format. But it doesn't feel at all like a Disney movie. It feels like somebody else made it. Yeah. So what was your final Christian nutritional value? Five out of ten. I gave it a seven. See, Hen? Everybody runs from the famous Tarn of Cat Dogger! <laughs> the final score for Black Cauldron between us is a 71 out of 100. <sighs> we recommend it, just not for kids. Basically. Well, yeah. Yeah. We recommend it, it's just not for kids up that are under. I would not. Anyone under a teenager. I it's dark. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Teenage. I would have loved it as a kid. Because you're a nerd. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're into darker stuff, definitely get it. Like, don't even ask questions. Just go get it. You're probably It's not probably going to be on Netflix to stream, I imagine, anytime soon. I don't think so. No, Netflix ain't going to put money to get a movie in it <laughs> that's not even that well known. It doesn't feel like a Disney movie. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Don't expect, like... Don't expect like Aladdin, Lion King, no. Mulan. Don't expect a masterpiece though. It's not at all. I know all. it says masterpiece. Don't expect one. It's not at all that type of movie. No, it's not that type of movie at all. But it is good, and I kind of wish there was just a live action version of it. That would I probably would be the it. superior version. Yeah. yeah. They did a modern day. Like if Disney's doing all these live action movies of their older movies, calling them other things. They should sure. really do this one. This one would be. A, this one would probably do much better than it did animated in '85. I could see that. That'd be pretty good. Next time we go into the depths of Christian cinema and review, believe me, you've probably never heard of it. Or if you have, it's probably because of Sagan and Kevin. Unfortunately, he did review it for us. But believe me, will be our next review. So stay tuned and subscribe. Bye.